Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking about something that excites me a lot and it is growth updates. Um, I've got two anthuriums right in front of me to start with. It's just started to get quite it's, it's not warm outside, the weather's been quite nice in Leeds uh, recently, but inside it's just such a nice temperature now. And in my greenhouse, it's hitting 20 degrees consistently. So everything's waking up, it's lovely. This beautiful Anthurium Silver Blush, no, yes, Anthurium Crystallinum Silver Blush from Grow Tropicals. She's been doing really well, but she's not put out a new leaf for a while until now, when I didn't notice until I watered her yesterday and it's so cute. Cute little guy just popping in there. Oh, you guys, there's two. There's one on the other side as well. There's one, look, there's a little one here. And there's this one, and now I'm doubly excited because I've never had an anthurium put out two leaves at once before. Yeah, I was really confused because yesterday when I saw this, I was like, I swear I just snapped the tip of the leaf off. And then I, I checked it and I was like, no, I didn't. But that makes sense because I did snap the very, very tip off this leaf because I didn't know it was the... And then there's also this one, which is slightly bigger. Oh, I'm so excited. I love anthurium so much. It will never get old to me. I just have so many of them. And the other anthurium, she is my baby. It's my anthurium clarinervium, the OG one from uh, Grow Tropicals. And she is putting out ooh, this lovely leaf. I like so much. God, I love when anthurium leaves haven't hardened yet. And they just have this really silky, silky nice appearance. Also, a lot of people seem to freak out when they don't realise that philodendrons or anthuriums putting out orangey or brown leaves is totally normal. Um, that's just what they look like when they first come out before they harden off into these beautiful, beautiful dark green velvet leaves. This plant though, I am not gonna lie, she has got a little problem at the moment and it's this spot which seems like a fungal spot. I have treated her multiple times with Provanto Ultimate Fungus Fighter. Um, and I've used the same treatment on my Clarinervium Crystalline, uh, Clarinervium Crystalline, what is with my brain? My Anthurium Crystallinum, the huge one that's here. This had similar fungal issues before uh, and I treated it at the bottom. And as you can see, like that's what you want to happen when you treat something with the fungus side where the area completely dried up, the yellow went away and I know that it's fine now and then it stopped spreading. This person now the hell had, uh, has not done that yet. So I may have to give her another spray, but the spot hasn't got any bigger. So anthuriums can just be prone to this, especially when it's been colder. Um, Cause we had quite a harsh winter, very, very harsh winter uh, in the UK this year. She's still beautiful. And I think it's really mean when, <laughs> when people just like, when people hate on their plants, okay? Because it's got a slight imperfection. Like I love my plants no matter what. And when you see plants in their natural habitats and botanical gardens, they're not perfect because plants being perfect is an Instagram, you know, myth. Plants just, they do their thing and they reward us with these beautiful, beautiful leaves. But sometimes they have a little imperfection and that's okay. Next, I have a tiny little Epipremnum. This is a Snow Queen, allegedly. I'm never sure if Snow Queen is really different to Marble Queen or if it's just a really high variegated version of Marble Queen. It's slower than other epipremnum that I own, presumably because there's such a low amount of uh, chlorophyll in the leaves. Um, so not being able to photosynthesize as efficiently as my other plants. But it's really cute. It's just given me this leaf, which isn't fully like unfilled yet. And this little guy. I got actually got this from Reva at Poppy's Potting Shed. And to start with, uh, I did at one point, I don't know where this came from. I had it in a couple of plants that were in this area in my room um, that had like a weird 
fungal on the root issue, which is very strange. But I've managed to save it and I saved a couple of clippings and this is it now. So hopefully it's really kicking into the gear now and I'm thinking that by the end of summer it could have be quite a full little pot to be, be cute. We'll see. We will see. Next I have Philodendron Tartum, which I think the full name is Philodendron Bipenna... I, I can't remember. There is, a, there is a second word in the middle there. We'll put it on the screen. It is one of my favourite plants I've ever got from Grow Tropicals, but also just consistently a favourite because it's just so weird. Like, unusual you don't see philodendrons with the this kind of leaf shape i don't know whenever i show this to anyone they're just like that's so weird super easy didn't require any acclimatizing whatsoever i repotted it about a week after i brought it home didn't go into transplant shock or anything even though i might have been a little bit rough on the roots trying to really get the um old compost off. My only problem with this is that, especially because I've got a lot of other plants around it, is that sometimes when I take it out of its space to water, I find that I accidentally will snap one of these little, I feel like I want to say fronds because it like reminds me of something like that, but I don't know if you would, but it's part of the leaf anyway, the long bits. I've snapped a few of them off before. I think I've got one somewhere at the moment that's like hanging off but I've just refused to accept it and actually remove it. <laughs> I don't know, I can't find it now. Maybe it didn't, but anyway. Beautiful, easy, 100% recommend. I feel like it's really hard to see right now because of the background, <laughs> but she has given me this leaf, which is hard enough now, and I've got two new growth points here. This and there. So I'm really, really excited. It's super cool when these unfurl new leaves because of just the way that they look with all these separate bits unfolding at different times. It, it just looks pretty crazy. Very interesting to watch. Next I have, this is Epipremnum pinatum. It's either blue form or dark blue form. This has been giving me quite a few. You can see this leaf was recently a new leaf that's not hard enough yet and got one unfailing at the moment. Tiny bit smaller than I would have probably liked and it will definitely be uh, due to lack of fertilising because I hadn't realised that it had started to grow again but I've just fertilised it today. So and I'm using liquid or liquid <laughs> what? Liquid fertiliser again just in with my watering at the moment I think I'm doing um, five drops of baby bio to 330 milliliters of water. Uh, I like to change up which fertilizer I'm using every now and then, but honestly, the reason I'm using baby bio is because it is what I found. I had some and I thought I'll use this up. I was using Super Thrive before, uh, which worked really well, but I don't seem to have seen a difference in the plants that I'd started fertilizing again this year earlier on. Like I'm not seeing them be annoyed that it's not Super Thrive as of yet. Also, this plant's super easy and doesn't require as much light as my other aeroids. Uh, I have it with a couple of other plants kind of uh, making the light more filtered over it and it grows really well. I have propped this a lot of times before. I have a couple of plants in my room that are a little bit over propped from me being a bit too generous <laughs> um, and this is one of those and I have been giving it a rest because I just I really want it to have a chance to kind of go for it now where I'm not chopping it for people <laughs> constantly. I'm super excited about this one. If anybody follows me on Instagram, you might have seen, or even in the past video I might have talked about this, I ordered about eight, I think I ordered eight little 6cm pots of variegated bear paw succulent. It was an English place, a yellow low, but anyway, I don't know what my brain was thinking because it's not all their fault, like the packaging when I ordered them, the packaging was terrible. They came in a one really long thin box and they were all just stacked on top of each other. Soil was everywhere. I don't know what they thought it was gonna happen. There was no bag around <laughs> to the pot. There was nothing. And in each of these little pots, there was just like one stem left with like a couple of leaves and it all snapped off. I then put them on the side 
where I bent down, knocking them all off again, further snapping, <laughs> to which point two were completely destroyed. I kind of looked at them and I thought, am I going to bother with this? But I really had wanted this plant for ages. So I saved three of them. They've, I've potted them together and they have grown amazingly. And I'm so glad that I saved them. This is my absolute favorite succulent. I think it's called uh, Cotyledon tomentosa. Um, and yeah, there is a non-variegated form of this you might have seen. I've also seen um, a slightly different one labelled as this non-variegated one, but it looks more like a calico, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, it's beautiful, it's fuzzy. It's, they're really easy to tell when they need watering um, because the firmness of the paws, paws will be a little bit less. Um, it's, you can just tell by touching it. Cause like now I just did it the other day and, and it's relatively firm. You can see it become flatter as well. If it's wrinkly, in my opinion, you've, you've let it go too long because these drop the, I won't say leaves, but whatever, these drop the little paws. <laughs> Sounds so funny. Uh, really easily if you do not keep up with the watering. But again, you don't want to overwater because it is a type of succulent. Each the leaves covered in like really tiny fuzzy hair. Um, it's just so cute. I love it. I I'm just excited for it to carry on growing and filling out this pot. This is such a glow up though. Um, and at the moment I've got, it's got loads of tiny little new paws coming and it's been branching off recently as well. Like there's this, that branch there, which was new and I'm just really excited. Got some new little ones coming in there. And yes, hopefully the middle part of this pot's gonna fill out this year. Next, I've got Peperomia prostata, which is string of turtles. And if I'm being totally honest, this looked terrible after winter. It was just such a disaster. It was tiny, like all of this, this is new growth. It was just really a disaster. And it was really coming down to it drying out way too quickly because I left it far too long to repot. So I finally repotted it and I did decide to use terracotta, which I don't usually do but I do I had this little part of my nan and I thought it would look super cute and I thought you know what I'm just gonna see how it does and it does not care I, it didn't care about the change from plastic to terracotta if I'm being honest it's done so much better but honestly I don't think the fact that it's got, done so much better has anything to do with the pot it's just the fact that I've actually remembered to water it and it's now not in the pot that's way too small. I'm actually really loving this now because before um, I just kind of, it was one of those plants that I kind of hated a bit and thought, oh, why do you have to look so shit? I don't really want you there. I'm just staring at you and it's annoying me how shit you look. But <laughs> this is one reason why I do not throw away plants uh, until they're absolutely no at the point of no return because she's so cute now. This is a plant that I am really, really proud of um, because it was literally from a wet stick stem cutting with no leaves. And now she's got five leaves. Um, this one, which I made a reel of, I was so happy about this because I was really worried that it was going to revert because before this leaf, I've just gotten this leaf and I thought, oh God. And then I saw this one and I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. She like was so nice. Um, and as you can see, the next leaf's even bigger. It looks like some variegation on there still. And I'm just excited. I, this plant has now given me a leaf a week for three weeks in a row and I, just really hope it keeps it up because I would love to actually have a proper sized Syngonium Albo. The last two plants I'm going to talk about today are two cane begonias um, and obviously there's lots more stuff growing right now but I just I have so many plants I can't talk about all of them but I just really want to get into more begonias recently because I used to think these were hard until I just cracked them and now I just realized that as long as you've got the really really high humidity that I'm not having problems I've had with begonias in the past um so I have these both in are they just in 
Oh, I actually mixed Simply House plant, 50% Simply House plant with 50% terrarium soil for the begonias, uh, which was the terrarium mix from Grow Tropicals. And I have them in my prop box at the moment uh, under a grow light. So the reason that I prefer to have begonias in my prop box, which is like a full spag moss prop box, is because the spag just keeps it like really, really um moist in there and humid so it's much higher humidity in there than in my greenhouse in my greenhouse i think these would still struggle and this one was a rescue begonia i've shown it a lot on our instagram when i first got it i got it for like two pound fifty off this rescue shelf at poppy's potting shed and it was super super crispy it was like a full-size plant that was just really really crispy um underwatered and like dried up basically um and i cut it right back uh rerouted a section a bit still kept the crispy leaves on um just you know to help it produce new leaves because they were about like half crisped up then when it put out two healthy leaves i cut off the crispy leaves uh, and then it put out this third beautiful leaf and then it didn't grow over winter and now it's putting out wait let me hold this other one in between my knees <laughs> it's putting out this this new leaf here the pinky thing and also it's got like growth points like there 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 so i'm just really excited to suddenly get loads of new leaves on this and this one although they look similar this is a different type of cane begonia which i got from a private seller i got it from artful plants uh, i believe it's begonia i think it might be begonia meconiana but i might be getting confused about calatheas i'll put it on the screen anyway and this one's a lot more compact and smaller than this one smaller dots similar looking flowers but so cute i just it's really subtle this is like the day outfit this is like the whoo nighttime outfit i really really like them they're very cute they're pleasing i want to get a lot more begonias because we've had some really really cool ones in one that's i think is adorable that i saw recently was a uh, maple leaf and it's got this very purpley sheen to it in person that is very very cute and i also would like to get begonia escargot the reason i was showing this is it's got a new leaf coming there as as well so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this growth update if you'd like to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on when we post more planty content then please do we also post daily on instagram there's a whole bunch of educational content over there and if you would like to buy some illustrated houseplant prints for your lovely abode illustrated by myself and han then please visit our website where we have a lovely range of products bye guys Thank you.